Not long ago, the idea would have seemed preposterous, but cars are cool again. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where we get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Auto sales are booming here, in Europe and elsewhere. Shortages abound, thanks not only to greater demand, but also to insufficient supplies of semiconductor chips. Buyers are even paying above sticker prices instead of the once customary bargaining. Used cars, prices have been revving up there as well. What gives? The pandemic has given a lot of people a new appreciation for the mobility the auto provides. Instead of relying on Uber, taxis, public transportation, or catching lifts from friends. Another factor, the mismanagement of many major American cities driving people to the suburbs, where autos are more of a necessity. A number of Zoomers and even Millennials who never bothered to get a driver's license are now doing so. Of course, the shortages will abate as supply increases, and the old romance surrounding cars will not return. Thanks to fuel efficiency mandates, automakers now feel constrained in how to design cars, which is why most models look like jelly beans and are hard to tell apart. But the casual indifference of recent times is gone. The growing use of cars and trucks will also underscore something that a lot of manufacturers, politicians, and observers won't want to hear. Most people are going to stick with vehicles using the internal combustion engine. The basic reason? It takes a few minutes to fill them up with gas or diesel fuel. It takes hours to recharge an electric vehicle. That's why governments here and abroad are resorting to big subsidies and outright mandates to get more people inside EVs. President Biden wants to spend billions here for EV recharging stations and the like. Washington never had to subsidize the building of gas stations. Another obstacle to EVs is the current state of technology regarding the generation of electricity. EVs replacing legacy vehicles would require construction of numerous new electric plants that would need fossil fuels. Alternatives to fossil fuels are incapable of meeting all such future needs without immense environmental damage from mining the necessary minerals for wind farms and solar panels. But while the current state of technology means use of fossil fuels will grow, especially in countries like India and China, there are surely quite a few individuals we've never heard of working and experimenting on creating or mobilizing other sources of energy, such as molten salt nuclear power or thermal heat or something the rest of us can't conceive of. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. (music) 